everybody, welcome to the Trade Corner. Those joining us for the very first time, welcome you all. Welcome. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sway Corner. For those joining us for the very first time, welcome you all. Welcome. I'm bold. <laughs> For the first time, my name is Orlunda BTW. Yeah, I'm bold. Why did I decide to go bold again in 2021? <laughs> I hope you have your tissues ready, like literally for this whole like heart to heart. But because of my peeps, right? So yeah i'm gonna try not to cry throughout this whole video but it's a very emotional reason why i decided to go bold um this 2021 <laughs> Ooh, okay we'll make it through this we'll make it through this we haven't even started yet and i'm already like halfway there starting to cry okay so basically the reason why i decided to go bold in 2021 is because i am dealing with grief um this for the past couple of months and i have been pulling out my hair as a stressor stress reliever i'd come home remove my wigs and as a stress relief be pulling out my hair literally by like i didn't even realize <laughs> that this has been like one of those things that i've been doing until the other day i was literally um i was taking out my hair from braids that i've had um for a while and then why is it so emotional talking about this damn it okay oh i need tissue sorry y'all i didn't think it was going to be this emotional but i literally just started i just thought it would be a nice like talking about grief and how different people handle grief in a sense but yeah, clearly I'm literally like in those emotions. So I have been pulling out my hair, literally my strands of hair for the, <laughs> for the past month. I didn't even realize that's what I've been doing until the other day I was taking my hair out from um, braids that I've, I've had in that I basically cut. And I've been very unsettled about having the hair um, on me the whole time. And my skin has been like, it's just not working out for some weird reason. Um, and then I've been like pulling out the hair when I scratch, I kept pulling and all of that. The other day, I was busy doing that. And then when I went back onto my scalp, I realized that I was seeing like, um, I think I came back, there was like uh, blood because clearly I've been pulling. But I didn't realize literally how much I've been doing that. And then, and that made me so emotional because I had a whole patch on my head. Mind you, I'm already the person where when I'm in like a stressful situation or any all of those stuff, my hair literally starts breaking anyway. Um, so i didn't even realize how much of a stressor um grieving was going to be on me and affecting my hair um it has been growing but yeah just the idea of like literally like, i just feel like so frustrated with the head of my the hair on my head i feel like i just want to literally pull it out i'm not settled with whatever it doesn't matter what hair i put in on me like i feel good for the moment but i don't like feel good if that makes sense so i decided um last night when i saw the blood and the patch of like bold space on my head to just cut off the entire thing i literally spent midnight it was wasn't it midnight close to midnight because i was watch, binge watching a series that my sister recommended and literally i just decided to take a um a scissor and just cut the whole thing because i wasn't like i wasn't feeling it and i didn't realize how much that would be such a um relief <laughs> for me because i'm usually the person like i have a video out right on this, right i have a video like way in the beginning i think in 2019 I, I shaved my head but it was just for the experience i really wanted to shave my head and i came in and i was like guys i think it's happening i'm literally just shaving my head and all of that stuff i watched this video this morning and i was like funny <laughs> funny thing I decided to film this video then anyway and be like because people kept asking me are you okay something happening and all of that stuff and i was like it is just hair i can cut my hair and all of that stuff oh that's funny but um fast forward to today it's amazing how this is literally 
was like a stress reliever you don't understand how i woke up in such an amazing mood this morning just because i, I cut i shaved my head i don't know i didn't understand it i was just like what the heck it is so different from um how i was feeling last night when i shaved it i literally like i slept literally for a whole nine hours straight and i just slept like that um in a good time since um the loss of my dad a couple of months ago so this is amazing how i literally just i literally shaved my head went to went to shower and i felt so exhausted like i had been crying and mind you i haven't even been crying and i was just upset with the fact that i could literally pull my hair out and hurt myself so much and not even feel like i'm hurting myself so much in that sense and there i was in the shower showered applied um aloe vera oil on my scalp put my silk wrap on and i was out for the count i'm sorry for the dogs and the kids like in the back playing in the background um but yeah it's amazing how it was literally like i was out like a light and then i woke up this morning at like i went like 11 ish like literally to the good 9 10 hour of just sleep like the sun came out and i didn't even feel it i just slept and when i woke up i woke up so refreshed so I'm sharing this with you simply because I wanted to share with someone you might also be grieving you might be going through a traumatic experience or just you know going through that and you are here frustrated about certain things and the things don't make any sense because most of these things that we do during this grieving process are things that you can, don't even know why you're doing it but you're, you're grieving and maybe you just don't want to face that you're grieving I attach big changes to processes of my life to um um, things of my life like what do you call them transitions in my life in a sense like if it's the new year for example i want to shave my head or get a new piercing or get a new tattoo or something for seasons yes new seasons in my life i want to do something like that to like remember the start of a new season um and somehow my dad passing last december made became somehow a new past a new season in my life and this literally like the season of like grieving and mourning and weeping and that's i feel i put that together because i don't even know where and which one i am right now but i'm in that one basket put together and in this season it's very um important that you recognize that you are going through this process many of us as black women are made to be strong totally no question about it no matter what happens you're supposed to be strong you're supposed to understand when traumatic things happen and you're supposed to deal with it dust yourself off and move on um but we have to recognize as black women that when we go through this type of events you know like it's not just about holding your head up high and waking up the next morning it is about recognizing that you are dealing with this type of stresses and that this is happening and that you are within the season that if you are in there and you're feeling a little bit like i'm not feeling well it's okay for you to not feel well and that um, if you're not coping that day you're not coping that day if you feel like you need a minute to yourself you need a minute to yourself if you feel like you want to shave your head for a new, <laughs> new season you want you need to do that you need to tell yourself and give yourself the space to heal because we're not given enough space to heal on a regular anyway because you're supposed to be strong if someone sees you crying over like someone who passed they'll be like why are you crying you already know this is supposed to happen but that's not the point of that you know i think we are so just as an example of that i know this is this talk is going to be all over the place but bear with me please is that i remember like when my dad passed and we had to and you know, we were busy crying for, and stuff and people will come and hug you and tell you why are you crying so much um think of the other people like think of your mother for example or you know think of your other siblings as well like you know like he was supposed to go for example or this has happened you must you know but the, the point of this whole thing is not people don't understand that people don't allow you not to understand but people just don't allow you enough time to grieve i remember that the same thing happened to my brother when we were burying my dad and he cried at the graveyard you know like when we're laying and the casket was going down and he was there and he started crying and my my family members came no offense to them no anything but the idea that they came and said yeah you guys but you must please think of your mother when you're doing this just calm down and all of that stuff but in my mind and even in that instant i was like let him cry because you cannot always be strong all the time 
it doesn't make you less of a person when you deal with like a traumatic event by crying if you're a guy for example or as a black person or just in general here we're supposed to be strong we've been strong the whole time because you're dealing with this whole thing you're making all these plans and all of that stuff for, you know to lay your loved one to rest or what traumatic event you went to but people don't have the right to tell you that you can't cry this much think of everybody else in that moment in time it is your given right to cry and wail and faint <laughs> and be like david and wear like a sackcloth and roll yourself on the ground because you're going through what you're going through like it is there's nothing that really like disappoints me makes me so angry when you i go to like functions like this or like not functions but yeah when you go to memorials or when you're giving over someone and people tell you to stop crying about them like that is not how that works the love that you felt for that person or the presence of that it like you can feel it it hits you so hard that you need to cry about it so that your soul can start healing but if you don't deal with it and you don't heal and you stay strong for the other people you can never heal properly and you go through life like a year or two years later and you're like i'm still dealing with this grief of losing this person because we never got a chance to deal with it you dust yourself up now you must start thinking about oh my gosh how am i doing take care of the family or i need to go on with life because you can break down in public and all of that but if you can cry in front of your family and deal with the grief that you're going through at that time i feel like it it it, it it's it's a key it's like it it defeats the purpose of you going through this grieving process yes we're going to lose people yes we're going to go through traumatic events but it doesn't mean that we're not going to sit there and feel it like we're not allowed to feel it yeah we are planning and you have to serve people who are coming to mourn with you and you must serve them food and all of that stuff and whatever people have come but it doesn't mean in that instant that you cannot take time out for yourself to cry about a situation you know but dealing with grief really like is one of those things and i've been praying about this whole thing while i've been going through it and i've been documenting the things that i've been going through as um, stressors um, a sign that I am, go I am going through this. I'm like very emotional, but I'm very in touch with my emotions in a sense of how I feel. I like sit down and I think about it and I pray about what I feel and how I feel in that instant and why am I feeling this way? Is it like a physical thing or is it a mental thing? And I made a few notes that I wanted to share with you. All right. So I want you to recognize those um, stressors in a sense or signs. The, the signs that have been literally for me, number one has been me crying at the drop of the head like i cannot <laughs> oh i'm not this much of a crier but yo i've been crying at literally at the drop of the head i just it's like in my heart like i just cannot so and then the other thing that i feel heavy feeling is chronic fatigue it doesn't matter how much i sleep or whatever i am just constantly tired i'm tired when i wake up i'm tired in the afternoon i'm, I'm like yawning like no one's business i cannot concentrate i'm just chronically i'm just tired and then you also feel like a sense of like chronic pain or just pain in general physical like why is my back so sore or oh, my feet i'm feeling with my skin I just feel like why is my face breaking out they're not breaking out but you can see it's breaking out i'm wearing a lot of makeup but my skin is good in the sense that really i'm not really like a breakout person but i can feel it on myself and then the constant headaches i cannot stand like i have a headache almost every other day and it has been like a constant thing like painkiller be damned like i just have a headache but none of those things that you know i feel like I, I i am still dealing with this dramatic experience and my it's taking a toll on my body it's just because i just i can't like mm. so that has been like signs of that i am going through what i'm going through and literally for me the top of um this whole situation is literally me like those of me pulling out i didn't even think it was a thing <laughs> when i see people do that, i'm like how do people do that you don't even realize you're pulling and i hear stories like that that you're pulling out your hair it's, it's stress that's doing that how do that has been me and i didn't even realize it because i'm like subconscious unconsciously or whatever you call it i'm just here pulling and i'm not even realizing it if i haven't seen if i didn't see blood or the patch i wouldn't even have realized i'm literally doing this to myself i'm dealing with this traumatic experience just to give you a background my dad passed like this it literally was two days and then shoop he's gone and then so i guess in a in a way we, I, we have i've not had a chance to like deal with i don't know i feel like i have dealt with it but things like me pulling hair out of my head you know just that how soothing that was clearly was one of those stresses and then this morning i'm like I don't understand it, Lord. Like, what is what? Why would I sit down and, and and 
and and for doing that you know but this is the kind of thing that the holy spirit constantly reveals to me when i talk to him about my stresses and stuff like that and then i have to realize that i'm not going to be okay for a while i'll be okay i'll be there and i'll laugh and all of that but part of me is not okay i'm not going to be okay for a while and i have to be okay with not being okay for a while and i have to forgive myself for not being okay for a while because i can always be strong it doesn't matter how strong that i feel i am and you know i know none of those things that really like people think oh my gosh you are so strong you're so strong but you don't feel so strong at that moment in time like right now i i don't feel that strong i'm literally dealing with this just every day some days are good days one some days you don't even want to get out of bed some days you do get out of bed with a smile but halfway through the day you feel like you just want to start crying for no reason or me at the end of the day while i'm watching a series and pull out my hair that you can tell that I'm dealing with grief you know so we have to be very sensitive to people who are dealing with grief and not tell them to be strong all the time and accept that people are dealing with grief and be okay with it because my whole fear about dealing with grief in front of people is usually that I'm gonna scare people I'm so used to being a strong person people are used to be me being a very strong person that dealing with grief will, I feel like will scare people like if I just at the office start to break down and cry it will scare everybody in the office and be like they don't even know what to do with me you know but yeah there's one of those things that really like that you just deal with as a person so i shave my head i'm gonna be like this for a while i think i don't even know yet but i am gonna be like this for a while without hair um and i forget how much i love my bald head i really do I forget how much i love my bald head because the past year i've done short hairstyles but i would you know i'm always like between short hair and like wigs and stuff like that and i miss my bald head and it looks so pretty <laughs> it does so if you see me out in the street with like my bald head don't ask me what is happening please don't um to people who talk to a person on a regular basis please be sensitive with your words like your good intentions can also just be bad your good advice can also be bad you must be strong let a girl just not be strong for just one moment i just lost my dad you know um and it's not easy to to get over someone you've lost like if it's, it's easier when you've known for a while and you can prepare for that for it but in the back of your head you feel like maybe you did have you know have an idea of maybe there's a possibility even if you've been praying against it but if you lose them like this you haven't even dealt with the trauma of them not feeling well you haven't even dealt with the trauma of you know all of that and we had to do our process so quickly because he died literally the day before my brother's wedding so we had to shut our emotions for just an instant so we can give my younger brother i mean a wedding that he would remember and not feel so emotional because my dad was not there you know and um it is basically what it is like is it going to be easy for the next coming year of course not it's going to be easy i mean as family members we're going to deal with it differently everybody in their own thing just know you are dealing with a traumatic experience or you're grieving or you're mourning or whatever um please find someone to speak to um who can be there and be a listener tell your friend whoever is the one that you're going to speak to that you don't need them to answer for you you don't need them to try and explain life and death to you you don't need them to preach jesus to you at that point in time you just want someone to sit there and they can give you a hug that can just be there for you and be with you in that moment don't do this alone because you're not alone um the other thing is only because i say that only because people can literally um look in the advice can sometimes be very bad to the, or the detriment of how you're feeling because then you feel like why do i keep talking to them because then be like hey you must just be strong at this moment in time even god knows all you need is, is someone to just be there so that you can weep and live in your emotions and it's also okay because we are also human you know you need to go through that and that friend cannot be the high and mighty person and all of that they just you just need comfort so find someone who you can be that with and just share get a psychologist if you need to if you can't speak to people if there's no one in your life to speak to i know the state has psychologists go to your local church there are counselors usually on a normal basis go to them and speak to them about this there's no shame in feeling like you're going to grieve and that you need someone to listen to you and that you need the help because not all of us as people and not all of us can go through this not all of us have like a sense of the holy spirit that can literally every day 
show you triggers because i didn't speak to anybody i literally am just constantly praying about how i'm feeling and being very honest about it with the lord i have god thank god for that because i don't know what i would have done without him everybody can see whatever they want to say about you and your jesus and whatever your feelings is but that's my process and i can speak to you today and recognize things like this because i speak to jesus and i also speak to my family about it about the grief that we are going through because we are in this together so it's easy for us to talk about our things together without someone telling you that oh you mustn't feel like that yeah let's basically that like, so i wanted to share this with you and i hope whoever it is you are there um and that you're hearing this and that you're not alone it's already a traumatic year with all this COVID situation happening and family members and job losses and all of that is already all of that but you have to know that God has got you it doesn't really get any less because your family member of yours passed away it doesn't matter how quick it happened how long or whatever it really doesn't unfortunately it's going to happen it's meant to happen it doesn't make it less hurtful for us hurt less for us no it doesn't um but it's now we deal with that loss in that meantime I can only rest in God you know and that's what i do and i know i know that i know that i know that he's in this with me and that i'm not alone and that he's giving me clarity the fact that i can take notes and, and notice things that are wrong with me not wrong but i'm going through is already a reminder that oh he is listening to what i'm going and he's noting the stresses on me so i can be aware that hey this is what is happening and pray about those verses find a friend you can pray with um you can also stand with you you know it is that no one can explain how much it would hurt you little last to lose to lose to lose a loved one no one can no one can even come close to explain explaining this to you there are degrees because of who they are in your life about how much hurt it is and you think you've got it until you don't so recognize that you don't have it recognize that you're weeping recognize that you're going through this whole process of more mourning of loss of dealing with grief or whatever traumatic experience it is that you've been going through recognize that it is that it will not go away in the moment you recognize that that's when your healing starts and if you rely on jesus it's even better because he can point out the stresses for you and be like now this is another stressor also people to stay away from at this time because that is also a divine intervention because you're staying with people who can like trigger emotions out of you you know and maybe you also need some time by yourself and just you and god and just you and a good glass of wine and just you and some good tears and just you time so that you can also deal with your own emotions um yeah so this is basically the idea of it. I am bold. And please don't pull out your hair. <laughs> if you're like me, you recognize it. Deal with it. Meet it. It's there. And yeah, you'll make it through one way or the other. I was literally saying to my mother, one we will come to a point where instead of remembering my dad and then crying, we remember my dad and start laughing about random things that he said and the life that he lived and who he was the random jokes that when we are together the songs that he used to sing when we are together because it's an amazing bass he had an amazing bass yeah Ooh. it's an amazing bass he carried an entire choir just him and his bass but that's literally what you know it will come to those points where you remember your loved ones instead of just you crying all the time when you remember how much you missed them you remember the good times that you had you remember how that they meant for you the lessons that they taught you you remember Part of who you are is because of who they were, but the fact that they were in your life. I cannot be this independent and this bold without my dad. I tell you now, you know, because we always make fun of this when we're talking about my sisters and my sister and talk about my dad who literally talk about stuff like, oh my gosh, we literally our dad's kid because of how he is. It's just his own person. But it's those kind of things, like after a while, those are the, the, the moments together will bring you so much joy instead of so much sadness. But you have to go through those moments of sadness because you only get to the moments of those joy when you remember those moments of sadness. That he's no longer there. They're no longer there, the traumatic thing you've gone through. And after a while, you can even laugh about things. I'm still tell you about the day that, you know, we found out that he had passed. There's a lot of jokes and laughing there, but now going into it, I can I think about it and I laugh at my reaction and and how I was but back then you couldn't tell me nothing 
I would have literally thrown something at you for you trying to mention my reaction. You know what I mean? And it's stuff like that that you deal with and that it's a process that you're gonna go through. And it doesn't matter how old you are, you never think about losing your parent no matter how old they are. You never there's never a moment in your life where you think you're going to lose your parent. No matter how Christian you are, you don't. Honestly, we don't. And they've been sick for a while. That's a whole difference in that situation. But even then, you keep praying and you keep hoping that they'll be, that they'll get well. But it doesn't take away from who God is if they don't get well or if they're gone. It doesn't take away. You can't say, but your God, yeah, I allowed your dad to pass. That's not how that works. He's still God with my dad gone. I mean, he's still God. I, that doesn't dispute anything. It doesn't take away from it. It doesn't, um, just take away. Yeah, it doesn't take away from who God is. He really doesn't. I, there's no doubt in my life that he is God, that he is God. And I still remember um, the day after that when we, in the morning, the one song that I really played was this Daniel you know, Darling Check song, My Jesus, I Love Thee, I Know That You Are Mine. And that is still the song. Like the next few days afterwards, every morning I would wake up and sing that song. Because I still believe that he's still Jesus and he's still mine and that this is still the song with all these things that happen in the world. Because absent from the body, his presence was God, and we believe that, and I believe that, and I strongly believe that. And that there's purpose and reason for everything. Some of it I might never understand now while I'm alive. I might never understand, but it's not for me to, to understand death. It's not for me to understand death. God didn't put it on there so I could understand death. He told me to understand what living life is or what it's going to be like, and that we are just visitors to this world. Does it make it hurt less? No. But still, you know, he is God. He is who he is. <laughs> Cannot take that away. And I will not dispute that. Don't leave that in the comment section. Please don't. I will not even dispute that. That's just, that's it. Because because of the Holy Spirit now seeing a counselor, I can identify things like this about what I'm going through without being a psychologist about the stresses of my life, about the now about that is a sign of that you're grieving that is part of because you're grieving not because you're going crazy or it's just your body it's just i'm grieving and until i'm good i believe that the whole spirit will also point that out that now we've moved on to a new level of what grievous you know it's raining but anyway i say all of that just to talk about grief and what you're dealing and just hopefully you know the stresses like i'm noting the stresses and that if you recognize them within yourself, please get help. Don't do this by yourself. Please get help. And people out there who really want to help you, um, who want you to be okay mentally, even though we don't talk about mental well health in that black room. I mean, it's only now that we're really like trying to focus it, but here in Africa, and like it's really one of those things where people don't really want to talk about mental health and mental wellness you know this is part of mental wellness i think we we've been through as black people in general people of color in general been through so much that because over the years generations have gone people think we have the stresses will just go away but they will not just go away they're always going to be there because our care our parents carry them carry them in raising us and you know and so you see the stresses but we don't want to talk about the stresses but you have to grieve to heck with being strong when you need to weep and like when you're in that moment you need to deal with your grief you can be a good human being to anybody not to yourself to your siblings to your kids you, you your job you'll be here acting out and you have no idea why you're acting out you'll be here your personality is totally changed and you don't even know why looking for comfort and ways so you can deal with your grief and you don't even understand why because you have to recognize that you are dealing with grief you're a better person when you start dealing with your mental health you and jesus don't do it by yourself why are my neighbors yelling? I do not understand. But I hope I've said everything that I could say and that you've at least taken my rare, long, everywhere around the world conversation and that hopefully it's not just me. I'm also helping you out. And sometimes we keep these things to ourselves, but sharing it with someone who also needs to hear it also heals them. So I hope in essence I've helped you and that I've helped you heal and recognize a few stresses in your life and know that you're not alone go to your church office wherever go to a friend find someone to speak to share with don't lose it in the bottle put in the drugs don't go crazy not being able to sleep painkillers all of that 
you have to deal with traumatic experience and it starts with you recognizing it so don't get through it you will get through it we will get through it honestly i think the one thing i forgot is find a hobby that makes you happy and a healthy hobby that makes you happy man is cook i've been cooking and baking like no one's business i've been praying like no one's business i've been listening to worship music because there's just some songs that just can make me cry and deal with it, whatever i'm dealing with at the time i mean my emotion at the time <sighs> and get out of the way don't get the right You know, one thing I know for sure is that God will get you through it. One step at a time, one day at a time, one emotion at a time. It won't be overnight. No one has dealt with trauma. You're gonna over it one day at a time, even though it happens like this. It's because it happens like an earthquake where you don't even know what find direction that you're dealing with it. But you'll get through it. To know that you will get through it. Recognize it. Make notes about milestones. I didn't cry today. I smiled today. I woke up happy today. I slept for a full nine hours today. I had a full meal today. I didn't take any painkillers today. Write them down, small victories. Long away. Write them down. Kind of amazing in a couple of months or so I want to look back at the notes in the journal that I write and see how far I've come maybe I'll share it for you, with you as well thank you guys so much for watching Don't forget to like comment and subscribe and yeah thank you for this heart to heart I'll see you guys in my next video